Right now it is time for Food for a Mood with Dr. Judy Workman. Judy is the co-author of the Serotonin Power Diet. Also, Simon loses his tummy before her voice was still. And Judy's latest book, Jill, is... What is the name? The, the Journal of a Duck's... What, what's, uh, I don't know. I just read it. It's on Maddie's desk, and we're loving it. Of a Duck's Mother? What is it, Judy? No. Journal of a Duck's mid- Midwife. Journal of a Duck's Midwife. Well, uh, anyway, welcome aboard, Judy. It is so... Anyway, I just have to say... You, you, actually, Maddie had a really good idea, and I'm going to just say it out loud, is we should contact Audubon. Ah, great idea. Yes. And um, you, there are numerous, Marshall can explain this better than I, right? Because, uh, Marshall, with Audubon, here, th- there are, are there different chapters? And so I don't know whether they need to be individually. So, so be, Marshall's saying Audubon and Sharon, for example. But, um, you know, that, that, there is no one that won't like this book. And it's just, you know, the pictures are great. The story is great. And. The only thing that I'm going to ask Judy is that next week's blog post, because it seems like that's my thing, is asking you to do different blog posts, needs to be more about anxiety because, boy, you're a good grandma, but you get nervous a lot, huh? <laughs> well, Jill, I, let's just say that I wasn't sure whether my next step was actually sitting on the eggs myself. I know. When the truck <laughs> disappeared for more than 12 hours uh, during a period of driving rain and, and, and temperature of 39 degrees or blazing sun, you know, temperatures of 95, and there I was putting up umbrellas to protect the duck and the eggs against either the heat or the rain, and, you know, going off into the, the, the garden, well, the, the park across the street from me saying, where are you, Sadie? Come back, come back. <laughs> Sit on your eggs. <laughs> so I, I, I'm really, sh- you know, nature is obviously more resilient than I gave it credit for, and the, the eggs satched and the ducklings were healthy, despite the fact that this mom obviously went off and partied every Saturday night. That's right. So what and can you I know, say? It, it, maybe there's a lesson in there. <laughs> yes, maybe all new moms shouldn't be so so, so uptight well, when it maybe, comes to their babies. Or, or, just, or, or, or just know that uh, you know if you if you're going to be sitting on eggs for 24 hours a day, you need you, ever so often you need some downtime. Absolutely, yeah, very good point. Very good point. And whether she went to a nightclub or to the ducks exactly. equation. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just of that. I just have to say anyway, it is char- you know, before- I, What I sent you today, though, it comes right out of your uh, conversation about a week ago in which you were telling me about somebody whose idea of really a gourmet meal was, I think, taking ra- ramen noodles and putting them into something like a, a Hot Pocket or, or burrito and saying that this was really you know, <laughs> the epitome was, of gourmet it was, dining. It was a lot. It, and well, your comment was, well, wait a minute. Aren't people considering whether what they're eating is healthy or not? And how about some vegetables, guys? And so, you know, I was thinking about this and, and realized that, um, you know, I know people, uh, a, a friend of my, one of my granddaughters, who will absolutely never touch vegetables on his plate, despite what they are. I know there's some things that he absolutely won't even, you know, come, come close to eating, but that there are others that, you know, that I, I think even though I, I try to prepare them well, you know, I made something called ratatouille recently, you know, with the combination of eggplant and tomatoes and garlic and uh, zucchini, uh, he carefully moved it away from touching anything else on his plate so he wouldn't eat the vegetables. And I thought, yeah, there are lots of people who grow up not wanting to eat their vegetables. You, you sort of assume that after they go beyond the age of seven that they might actually look at something on their plate and say, huh, you know, maybe it tastes okay. Maybe I don't have a food phobia about eating this, but, but that's not the case. I think, and what can you do? What can we do about it? As you pointed out, you know, if people don't do this, you know, their total food intake is really going to be, you know, verging on not being healthy. People don't take vitamin pills. Where are they going to get their nutrients from? Where are they going to get their fiber from? And I think one of the problems is that we don't do enough to make eating this category of foods, uh, you know, uh, attractive. Um, what happens is that uh, you know, we go into a supermarket and we look at vegetables, and even though it really doesn't take very much effort to prepare them, things come peeled and chopped and diced and microwavable packages so that you, you know, don't even have to boil water in order to, to make a vegetable. 
you have salad mixes that come with all sorts of add-ons, like, you know, dried cranberries, for example, and, and dressings. And it's not that hard to find, uh, you know, a, a, pa- a preparation of vegetables that can be made and put on your plate in, you know, three and a half minutes, which really tastes good, but people still won't buy these. And, and you know, or, or nutritionists say, well, you shouldn't buy anything that has a sauce or flavoring because, you know, that isn't very healthy. My feeling is it makes you eat the vegetable fine. You know, you, eventually you may be able to eat it without all those flavorings, but at least it, it'll get you to taste it. But I think one of the problems, there's a couple other problems. One is, is that we go into a restaurant, and these days, if you go into anything from a fast food restaurant to something that is extremely high-end, Vegetables are optional and cost more money. If you, know, you can get a salad at a fast food restaurant that consists of nothing but something like pale lettuce, pale tomatoes, and paler cucumbers, whose nutritional value is practically zero and probably taste is also zero. Or you can go into a very high-end restaurant, mm-hmm. and sure, there are vegetables around, but the, the, um, they cost extra, and oftentimes they come absolutely soaked in some kind of sauce or oil or what have you. You order spinach and you can't find the spinach for the high, you know, the, the ladle full of cream sauce that are put on top of it. So we don't have, you know, it, it, we are not, not accustomed to ordering a, a meal that has an entree and to, you know, veg, the, vegetable side dishes that pretty much still look like vegetables. Um, the, the, other, the other thing is uh, that we don't know we're never really given an opportunity to even see, let's say on a video, how easy, a cooking show, for example, how easy it is to prepare really tasty vegetables and have, you know, somebody, like they do in the Food Network, sort of tasting it and sort of swooning over the taste. I've rarely seen that happen. There's, I mentioned in my blog that there's this very compelling show, especially if you're hungry, called Diners, Drive-Ins, and I forgot what the other part Dives. is. Dives. dives, that was it. Because you spend so much time at dives, right, Judy? Pardon? Because you spend so much time at dives. That's exactly right. I'm not sure what, what one eat in a dive except a dive shop. But if people are swooning over their, their 2,000-calorie multi-layered hamburger or whatever, but you don't see them swooning over a gigantic salad or, or incredibly made vegetables. One of my friends told me, yes, that she once saw a show in which they featured a vegan restaurant, but that must have been a fluke. And, and so, again, a no, no opportunity, really, to swoon over a vegetable. And finally, you go into a supermarket, and wouldn't it be nice if there were little videos over the produce section saying, okay, look, why don't you make your squash this way? Or, or as I was thinking to myself, over the, the condiment and spice aisle, gee, look, here's some cinnamon and nutmeg. You can put that over your squash. Or here's some soy marinade sauce. Why don't you roast your broccoli or your cauliflower and you know sprinkle some of the soy sauce over it? You know, again, a nutritionist say, "Oh, that's dreadful. You're putting all that salt and additives." But my gosh, if we can get somebody to at least take a bite of a piece of roasted cauliflower or broccoli, maybe they'll say with some, you know, Chinese flavoring on it. Wow, you know, it really tastes good. I think I'll have another bite. I think we have to start being imaginative and not just flailing our arms and our, you know, mentally our heads and saying, oh, nobody eats their vegetables. Let's try and do something about it. Well, you know, it's funny. I'm, I'm going to take a minute here. Just, I, I, I try to get more iron in my diet. So what I did the other day is I took, uh, and this sounds crazy, but it worked. Uh, I took a, I took a small potato and I baked it at first. Uh, then I, I took a, about yeah, six ounces of, uh, of hamburger. And I, I just, you know, cooked that up and drained off the grease. And right. then what I did is I chopped the potato into uh, quarters, and I scraped off some fresh corn that I had from Le Bon's. And so I you put basically it, made a shepherd's and, pie. And then I put in some fresh carrots, and I put it in, a, in a, all together, and it, it came out. That's really that. good. It was a very healthy shepherd's pie because it didn't exactly. have all the, it didn't have all the other garbage in with it. But I was able to. I was able to. By the way, the- shepherd's pie started out being that, yeah. you know, with leftovers, and it turned into something that you know added a few thousand calories. Well, I, I, but I, I, I just it, that cracks me up because again, that's good, that's wonderful, but that's not vegetables. Well, yeah, I, there was a, there was. There well, was yes. yeah, if, he, if, he, if you had added some, let's say, carrots were good. 
Yeah. And you could have perhaps added maybe some, you know, chopped spinach or something like that. Yeah. But, but yeah. look, it was a start. And I think, again, you bring up a very good point, Marshall, which is why don't we have vegetable dishes that have a combination of protein and, and carbohydrate and, you know, and a whole variety of vegetables in which you can't really take out, tease out only the protein content. You know, again, this, this friend of my, my, my granddaughter's, if I gave him a shepherd's pie, it'd be really hard for him to take out all those vegetables and just eat the hamburger. Is he it? would have to eat the whole dish and, oh, and actually eat some vegetables. So maybe that, you know, think of vegetable soup. Who's going to pick out the vegetables? You know, maybe what we should do is have more combination foods like that. It's a possibility. We are going to work on this. Thank you okay, very Jill, much. It's your, it's, it's your crusade. All right. <laughs> Dr. Judy Wirtman, Food for Mood. <laughs> and, of course, you can hear Judy here on Robin Hood Radio every Thursday morning before this week in the Lakeville Journal, also on demand, robinhoodradio.com. Click on On Demand. Click on Judy Wirtman, Food for Mood.